Let's take a moment to look at some Q attributes in more detail. And what I'm referring to is the section of our Q list in the column that says attributes and what all of those mean and how you would use them on the desk. So let's take a look at the first one. The first one is labeled FW slash HG, and that is an abbreviation for follow and hang. Now, follow time on an EOS is probably something that you're pretty familiar with. Just to recap, it's expressed in a time, and it starts counting when you press go. When the countdown completes, it executes the next queue on an automatic follow. EOS adds additional functionality to that feature with the hang feature. And what hang will do is it's also a time but that time doesn't begin counting down until the queue that it's assigned to has finished its fade. So a hang time is really nice because you don't have to calculate how long the follow needs to be if you want a certain amount of time to pass in between the two queues. It's especially handy if you're constantly changing the time on, on your queue to be followed. You don't have to go back and update the follow time every single time. So a hang is a really nice way to do that. Now to access this feature, you use the follow hang key on the console, and to get the hang to post, it's a double hit of the follow key. So when I hit Q1, if I hit the follow hang key the first time, it's a follow. The second time, it's a hang. And then I can specify a time, and all is good. The next thing we want to look at are link and loop. And link is a feature that, again, you might be familiar with. This allows you to jump out of sequence in the queue list, either to skip a queue or to go backwards to a queue if you want to do that. Uh, the loop feature allows you to specify the number of times that a queue loop that you might have set up returns to the beginning. So if you have a series of auto follows and then a link back to the beginning, you can also assign a loop to the last queue and specify the number of iterations. And the console will count down and finish. And when it's done with the last iteration, it will just wait in the last queue for you to, to push go to move on to the next queue. These two features are accessed with a soft key. So if I'm looking at a queue, I have a link slash loop soft key. The first time I hit the soft key, I will get link. The second time I hit the soft key, I get a loop. Now I would like to talk to you about a feature that the EOS has where you can apply curves to your queues. And essentially this will work in, in uh, two different ways. When you're working with a single part queue, you can apply a curve and it will affect the intensity that is happening in that queue. So maybe you have a designer that really likes the IES square or maybe a slow bottom or a fast top intensity fade, you can apply that curve to the queue and all the intensity values will fade with that curve applied. But an example I want to show you is how you could use a curve with parameters other than intensity on the EOS. And specifically, I'm going to do this in my queue number three. And what I'd like to do is to have the movement of some of my moving lights on a fast top curve. So what I want to do is first break only the focus category into its very own part. I'm in Q3, so I say focus, record part 3. And after confirming, I now have my very own part 3, and it's just for focus. Now what I can do is I can take that part 3 and apply my curve. Now curve is under more soft keys, and curve 904 is a fast top. Now when I run that queue, step back into two, our gobos on the wall are going to follow this curve. So they'll start out moving slow, and toward the end of the fade, they will ramp up and finish rapidly on the fast top curve. And finally, I want to talk to you about a feature called preheat on the EOS. And what the preheat feature will do is automatically glow filaments so that when you push go on a queue, you don't have a delay if you're using large uh, filamented fixtures like a 2K or a 5K or something. In patch, I already have some of my conventional channels that are set with a preheat level of 5%. And now all I have to do in the EOS console is tell it where there's a queue that I want to make sure those lights are ready to go. And in this case, in Q2, I have some of my conventional lights off and they turn on in Q3. So what I want to do is set the preheat flag to Q3 and I do this by typing Q3. Preheat is under more soft keys. And enter. And now you will see in my flags column on my queue list 
that I have a P that has been assigned to Q number three. Now what the console is going to do in this scenario is it's going to keep an eye out for this type of, of situation where if lights that I have set up to be preheat are off in one queue and they turn on in the next queue, the console is going to automatically set them at the level that you've assigned in patch. So let's take a look at what that looks like on our screen. I'm going to back up into Q2 because that's where the lights are off. And you can see on our channel display that 3 and 7 are marked for a preheat as indicated by the pH. What this means is the console is telling me, hey, these channels are off in this queue, but they need to come on in the next queue. And you've asked me to preheat them, so they're just going to be at a glow, and it does this automatically. So now when I push go, the filaments are already warm and ready to go. And that is a look at some of the queue attributes in greater detail on the EOS.